Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video here to talk about the upcoming Halloween event 2024. And I'm laughing because this is like the third time <laughs> I'm going to record this video. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, I obviously just said it. The event itself just had a stream, and I waited for it just to see if it can better explain some of the things inside here. Because for some reason, I have not been able to get my head around this event as someone who does not play JP and didn't get to experience it myself. This thing looks complicated as hell, but finally I figured it out because they had their stream, and I was able to see some stuff in English, and I said, okay, I get it now. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to very quickly go over the event because obviously... It's going to be here pretty soon. It's going to be here after maintenance. So, let's get into it. Just to say again, the event duration. This looks funky because this is on the JP version of the game. That's why it says 2022 and not 2024. It should start on the 11th, right as soon as maintenance ends. The... Um for me, that's always on That's always on the 11th, but for you, I don't know how that's going to be. I'll assume it's also on the 11th. And to actually participate in it, you have to have cleared Olympus itself, um, which is very hard so if you have not cleared olympus and you're a new player i would suggest keep grinding through that story my guys <laughs> guys and girls keep grinding it that's what the game wants you to do so badly uh, in terms of new servants these are going to be the two banner ones that i'll talk about a little bit later which is juan zuo and juan zvai hu and then there's the welfare which is the nine tattoo dragon eliza which I'll talk about a little bit more in a bit. The event schedule will look like this. On release day, it will have the prologue, main quest, act one, free quest, and fundraising quest. And then every day, it will have everything until about um, the 17th, where the final epilogue will unlock along with the final free quest and fundraising quest. Okay, so this event, just to very quickly talk about it, I finally figured it out. Okay. The reason this looks so confusing to me is that you have to organize Mount Liang, and you have to assign servants to it. Um, there's also default guest servants, which you can replace them with a higher version of it if you own a higher version of them, like a grailed version. Um, the higher, the reason that this matters is that the higher level your servants are, the more points you gain when clearing quests, including grailed levels. So, for example, if it's um, if you were to get a thousand points plus the servants level times ten. You would get 1,650 if they were level 65, and if they were level 80, 1,800, and then if they were level 100, 2,000. And then you can also automatically assign them. So while you're doing the main quest, so you assign these dudes right here, you see the three here, and then you'll get the specific thing that is offering them as you clear the quest, and then you'll get them. And then once you finally have all of them, that will unlock a fundraising quest. So after you have cleared Act 1 and finished 10 jobs, you will be able to finally do this fundraising quest. And yeah, clearing them gets you this stuff right here, um, which shouldn't be too bad at all. So you can see here, they explain it a little, go into it a little more. Signing servants with the Stars of Destiny job will create a job that consists of multiple stars. Clearing event quests with the job group will accumulate progress for each job group, and you can get items when the job is finished. After the job progress has reached its max level, the fundraising quest will open, and then clearing that fundraising quest will give you various items. So basically, just assign dudes, do stuff, it's not that hard. I was overcomplicating it for no reason in my head. It seems way harder than it is, but it's not. It's just give a high grailed servant here, put them here, get this done, and then just do that a whole bunch load of times and unlock a bunch of other fundraising stuff. Not, not difficult. <laughs> Clear enough jobs. Do all that. Simple. Simple stuff. At least I think so from looking at it. Anyway, the other stuff related on here. Uh, just to show you very quickly the event shop before I actually just talk about the units. Just because this is coming up so quickly. Um, because of the event mechanic itself, there's going to also be some specific other things related to it. So the, the, the actual drop material is going to be the Azure Dragon Ornaments, the Seven Mansion Vase, or Vase, and the Expensive Scroll. And then there will also be another set of CEs, which will be free CEs, which you'll get right here, which will upgrade your military affair, government affair, or domestic affair. And then equipping the event CEs acquired from the shop will increase the amount of job progress gained. Um, they'll be Dancing of Lotus Blossoms, which increases military affairs, the Tiger Hunting Aesthetics, which increases the government affairs, and the Flowing Pool of Wine, which increases the domestic affairs. Those are the three CEs. 
I'll talk about them a little bit later as well, in terms of what they actually do. But those are the mechanics in place. In terms of the shop, the um, Azura Dragon Ornament, which you'll need a total of 6,850 to get everything in the shop. It will feature two of each of the CEs that you can get here, along with a copy of Eliza, the Ascension Material required for her, 16 coins, Servant Coins, and Allure, and this will be shared between all three of them, with the main difference being that you only get one copy of the of the, of the the CEs. Um, yep. And that's the basic difference for them in there, and everything else stays the same. You'll also get two Golden Foe of Attack and HP in the Gold Material, and then in the Silver one, it's two of the HP one, and then in the Bronze Material, it's two of the Attack one, which you can see it's right there. And then the other thing that's shared is there's seven statues for each of the main classes. There'll be 20 of them each. It's golden in the gold material. It's silver here. And then there's nothing for the um, expensive scroll at all. And then there will also be card removers in all three of them, along with a buster code opener, which is going to be uh, for golden, it's buster. For silver, it's, Ar it's quick. And then for bronze, it is arts. Okay, and then in terms of the materials that you can find within here, it's going to be Cosmic Shards, um, War Horse's Immature Horn, Bloodstone Tears, and the Twilight Ceremonial Blade for gold, for gold material. For the silver material, you can find the Primordial Langua, the Snake Jewel, the Aurora Steel, and the Void Refuse. Um, and then for bronze material, you can find... Um, uh, Forbidden Pages, the Meteoric Horseshoe, and the Magical cere Cerebrusual Fluid, and then also some chains. And that's it for the event shop itself. And then to talk about the things that will be in here, which is specifically the Gotcha Craft Essences, the Event Craft Essences, and the Event Command Codes. Starting with the Event Command Codes, there will be Knight of the Abyssal Sanctuary, which is the 5 star, which is attacking with the engraved card, inflicts curse, uh... A 500 on the target for three turns, then you gain three crit stars. On the four star is the Azure Dragon nine section staff, which is engraved a card star absorption plus 50%. Attacking with the engraved card removes one latest critical rate up buff from the target. And then the three star is a Shifu Sokun, which is attacking with the engraved card, buff removal resistance plus 10%, and then restore 100 HP. For the event craft essences, it's dancing on the Lotus Bloom, which is an ignore defense CE along with a buster 8 play percent and crit damage of 15%, which having an ignore defense CE is actually extremely useful. There was actually a most recent challenge quest where if you did not have ignore defense of any way in any capacity, it made the fight extremely annoying because you then had to wait for her to drop her defense down and you couldn't just like sneak in some attacks on her. Uh, there's Tiger Hunt Aesthetics, which is art plus 10%, crit damage plus 10%, and starting stars plus 15, which is very nice for a lot of the free-to-play minded folks who still need, not free-to-play, but a lot of new newer folks who need a CE that gives you starting stars because uh, this is a very useful effect to just have. And then there's Flowing Pool of Wine, which is MP generation up 50%, MP damage up 5%, and is starting MP plus 30%, which seems like an okay... Um, uh, grinding CE type of thing because it does give uh, MP generation rate and some MP damage the only downside of it is there's obviously no attack outside of the MP so it really should be best focused on, an, on a unit that only really wants to shoot their MP and then also just needs help with MP generation rate and not the actual damage itself and then for the gotcha craft as it says we have spare the idle talk which is NP regen plus 4% MP damage plus 15% and crit damage plus 15% and this will give you the golden material and then we have Lakeshore Heavenly Nymphs, which is a star region of 3, um, and then MP Overcharge, plus 100% for one time, and this will give you the silver um, material. And then we have the Hoeing with Sword, which is the HP region, plus 50, and MP generation rate up by 5%, and this will give you the bronze, and this is also a 3 star one. So those are the CEs right there. And now we could finally talk about the actual units themselves inside the summoning campaign. So I'm only going to be focusing on three units this time because these are the units that are going to be popping up really soon. But there is actually going to be a second banner coming up later. I'm still waiting to see if they're going to change this banner in any kind of way. But assuming that there's no changes, it should still just be Jack de Molay, Sei uh, Shonagon, Murasaki Shikabu, uh, Taigon Wong, Yang Quinn, Yagyu, uh, uh, Chin Lingyu, 
Uh, Yang Jing, I forgot that that's how you actually say his name. And then Haitian Lobo. Um, I'll go over these as specific units when they finally announce this banner just to see if they change any of the units on them. Most recently, they have actually been adding units to it, so I just want to wait a bit and wait for that. And then finally, we'll talk about the actual units. Starting with Nine Tattoo Dragon Eliza, which is going to be the welfare for this time, and she's free. She is the Pretender class. She's Eliza. She has two quicks, one arts, two buster, four hits on the quick, three hits on the arts, five, three hits on the buster, and five hits on extra. Her first skill is the War Cry Mount Liang EX, which is an increase to party's attack for three turns, increases the critical damage of allies with the lawful alignment for three turns, increases the MP damage of allies with the neutral alignment for three turns, then increases the MP generation rate for allies with the chaotic alignment for three turns, and then grants party the Mount Liang trait except for self for three turns, and then increases own critical star absorption for a single turn. The attack up is 20% along with the crit damage, MP damage, and MP rate. And the absorption is 500% on a cooldown of 6. Her second skill is the Enormous Banquet Mount Liang EX. Charges an MP gauge of Mount Liang allies and then increases the max HP of Mount Liang allies for 3 turns. And then a 500% chance to reduce the debuff resistance of Mount Liang allies by 20% for 3 turns. This is considered a demerit. The MP up is 20% and the HP increase is 2000 on a cooldown of 6. And then her third skill is the Coat of the Minute Star C is an increase to Quick and Buster performance along with crit damage for 3 turns, 30% to Quick and Buster and crit damage on a cooldown of 6. Her two passive skills are Independent Action B+, and Territory Creation Mount Liang EX, which is an increase to own arts performance by 6% and then an increase to Critical Star Generation by 6%. Her sixth skill is the anti-assassin attack damage aptitude, which is increased attack against assassin enemies. Which, this is a moment of trust no one, not even yourself, because this is Camilla's. <laughs> I forgot how many Liz's uh, just exist and how many classes there are. That basically this covers just about all of them. Noble Phantasm is the Zhurong Elishan uh, Shooting Star, which is the 9 Great Azure Dragon Maidens Meteoric Sky, rank A minus, anti-song dynasty. Hits 9 times its buster, it deals damage to all enemies, reduces their defense by 10% for 3 turns. The MP damage at level 1 is 300%, but you'll be getting her to MP5 at 500%. And then an increase to own critical, uh, increases own critical star generation rate for 1 turn, and then increases MP damage for a single turn. These activates first for the overcharge effect. At the first level, it's 50% star rate up and 10% to MP damage. And if you get it all the way to the final level, it's 150% to star rate and 30% to MP damage. And that is Eliza. Ooh, it's a lot to say here. Well, first of all, she is Buster, so all her skills are under 6, which means she can get them back with Koi and Skaya. She is, of course, Chaotic Evil, so of these, she would get Chaotic Alignment MP Generation Rate, which isn't the greatest, actually. Uh, but it is actually kind of an interesting support kind of unit. I like the idea of this, especially because the second skill also gives 20%. The problem is, though, is that to do a traditional buster loop, which is two Koyan Skyas and an Oberon, you need to have an MP charger that gives you 30%. And at the moment, she has something that gives 20%, which is not good. Which means that she would not likely be used for looping purposes, at least not in the traditional sense. You probably have to do double Oberon if you want to actually loop. Because just because she does not get the 30%, she gives 20% and she gives it to everyone. So she probably is better off used as like a weird support servant of some kind. Like if you have a um, chaotic neutral ally that needs MP generation rate and MP damage up, you can give them that. Let me see, is there any actually chaotic neutral? Is it possible to be chaotic neutral, actually? I don't think so. It was. It, it is funny to think about, like, I don't think you can be chaotic and neutral at the same time. Maybe neutral good and stuff like that. Hmm. Well, it's a free unit. Um, I do think she has some interesting stuff to her, so I'm gonna kinda try and mess around with her and see if I can make some kind of silly team that uses her. Um, she'd probably be alright in a kind of like maybe a multi-core type of way. Mm. She would give herself 20% that gives it to everyone. Maybe I could see her using in that. The other thing that kind of is a bummer is the fact that she's Pretender. 
So that means that if you're ever in a node that mixes and matches the Knight class and the Cavalry class, it means that she won't be able to do type effective damage to everyone on the team. It's something that also affects um, Alter Egos for the same reason, is that they, it makes them a little bit difficult to use in those kind of scenarios. But I don't think it it comes up enough to where you have to take it take it into account. But at the same time, if you're ever in a situation where she has type effective against everyone, that's just good. That's just good in general. So no, that's Eliza. I think she's neat. I like the look of her as well. I've always liked the design of this Eliza. It's a good. This is a good, fun-looking unit, and I love this Noble Phantasm. If you have not seen her Noble Phantasm, it's maybe one of my favorites in the game. <laughs> it's such a silly concept of her summoning all the Lizzes and summoning them out and beating dudes up with it. I think it's great. But anyway, that's the welfare. Always nice to have a interesting, good, free unit. Now, in terms of the actual banner units, we have Huang Fei Hu, who is not limited in any capacity. He's going to be in every banner going forward, and he is a writer. He has one quick, two arts, two buster, four hits on the quick, four hits on the arts, three hits on the buster, and five hits on extra. His first skill is the Prince Wu Shang EX, increases party's arts performance and buster performance for three turns. It then grants self the Prince Wu Shang who guards the kingdom status for three turns. Uh, Prince Wu Chang, who uh, guards the kingdom, changes own chaotic alignment to the lawful alignment. 20% up to Arts and Buster at level 10, and that's a cooldown of 5. His second skill is the Golden Eye Divine Warbler A. Increases own, uh, charges own MP gauge every turn for 3 turns. Grants off the Scut status for 1 time 3 turns. If Self has the lawful alignment, increase own critical damage for 3 turns. And if you have the chaotic alignment, increase own MP generation rate for 3 turns. 20% to MP gen, 50% to lawful crit damage, and 50% to chaotic um, MP rate up, and a cooldown of 6, and the revive is 3000 HP. His third skill is the Multicolored Divine Ox EX, an increase to attack and crit damage and critical stars every turn for 3 turns. So 30% attack, 30% crit damage, star regen is 10, and the cooldown is 6. Magic, uh, his passive skills are Magic Resistance D, Writing B+, Divinity C, Dragon Spear Technique B, and the Bond of the Hoang Family B. Dragon Spear Technique is an increase to own critical damage of the Buster cards by 10%, and the Bonds of the Hoang Family is a gain 2 crit stars every turn and then increase own debuff resistance by 10%. His third skill is an Anti-Foreigner Attack Damage Aptitude, and his Noble Phantasm is rank A. It is a Buster Anti-Unit, hits 5 times, and then deals damage to a single enemy. If you get him to MP level 1, it's 600%, and if you get him all the way to MP level 5, it's 500%. And then he increases his quick arts and buster performance for 3 turns, this activates first on an overcharge. And it's 10% for all 3, and if you get him all the way to the final charge level, it's 20% for all 3. And that is Huang Fei Hu. An interesting single target um, rider for sure. Hmm, I wonder if there's something you can do with the, the ability to just change your chaotic and alignment and lawful alignment. The funny thing here is, uh, the thing I kind of like is using this skill here after, it depends on I guess the scenario that you're in. If Depending on the cards that you got right now, if you have a little bit more buster focus, obviously the answer is you want to make sure to get lawful crit damage in before the chaotic NP rate. But if you're in a situation where you got like his noble phantasm, a quick and an arts, maybe it would be good to use this one. It kind of is a little we it's a weird version of versatility, but I do think it's kind of funny versatility that can be pretty nice. There is also some dudes who can buff the chaotic side if I look down here. Uh, alignments, quick, no, where are you? Where are you, you fucker? I know you're here somewhere. There he is. So when he's chaotic, he can be used here because he can give chaotic enemies some crit damage in here, and then he can also give some chaotic enemies some attack as well. But it is good to notice that, so he changes his own chaotic alignment, and then he goes lawful. So you'd be able to use the beginning parts of it and then kind of do stuff like that? Hmm. It sounds interesting. He's not limited, so I don't think I would ever go chasing for him, but if I ever did get him, I would definitely want to try and mess around with him and kind of just do some stuff. <laughs> it seems a little bit... It's interesting because it looks both basic, but at the same time, it's basic in a like interesting way. If that makes any sense at all, <laughs> it probably doesn't. This Noble Phantasm 100% is like, yo, this is very basic, but the rest of it sounds kind of interesting to me. 
like a different way of doing it. But then if you remove those gimmicks and you just give it to him, I guess he is just a unit that is maybe jumping for hoops to just get some basic buffs. But I don't know, I still think it's kind of cool. The idea of a unit changing their own alignment and stuff like that. But anyway, that's Huang Fei Hu. And then finally, we have the actual 5-star, who is going to be actually limited. Huang Zohui. That's probably not how you pronounce it. Zoi, 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 Zoi. Let's go with that. Huang. She is an assassin. Two quick, one arts, two buster. Four hits on quick, four hits on arts, three hits on buster, five hits on extra. The first skill is a double club A, increased to own quick performance for three turns, and buster performance, and then grants have a buff on attack buff for three turns, which increases own critical star generation rate by 20% for three turns when attacking with quick cards. Activates first, and then it grants self a buff on attack buff for three turns. Increases on critical damage by 20% for three turns when attacking with buster cards. Activates first. Quick up in the quick and buster up is 30%. On a cooldown of six. Her second skill is the Heavenly Force Star A, and it increases to. It ignores invincibility for three turns, and then increases own attack for three turns, and then increase own critical star absorption for a single turn. 30% attack and 500% absorption on the cooldown of six. Her third skill is a Sensitive Metal EX, grants self evasion for 2 attacks 3 turns, increases own buff removal resistance for 3 turns, and then charges on MP gauge. The buff removal resistance is 100%, and if you get her, uh, the MP up is 30% on a cooldown of 6. Um, her passive skills are Present Concealment C, Writing B, and then Phantasmal Beast Possession C, which is an increase to Critical Star Absorption on Buster Cards by 10%. Her third skill is an Anti-Archer Attack Damage Aptitude, and her Noble Phantasm is Rank B-, the Impusa Chain Tempest, Chain Linked Horses Raging Storm Formation, which is my favorite of the Storm series of the Naruto games. Rank B minus anti army, hits 8 times, deals damage to all enemies, deals 150% extra damage against enemies with the evil alignment, 40% chance to stun them. Um, the MP, the damage at level 1 is 600%, and if you get it all the way to the final level, it's 1000. An increase to quick performance for a single turn is activates first as the overcharge, and if um, the first charge is uh, 20%, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 40%, and that is Hu Yang. She seems tailor made to be used with the new Summer Scotty. Like, everything about her kit feels like they made Summer Scotty and they said, what about a unit that can actually take advantage of the quick and buster buffs that she gives them? So I think she actually works excellent with her. In terms of an, a, looping, a looping unit, I would be a little bit cautious about the fact that she doesn't have any form of NP gain on her at all, but I think she makes up, with, makes up for that by having... 8 hits on the Noble Phantasm. Usually you can make up for lack of NP gain if you have a bunch of hits on your Noble Phantasm, because those will help you get up there if you're not able to make it in time. And maybe in just pure damage she'd be able to get there, and obviously if you're ever fighting anyone with the evil alignment, she's going to be doing a lot of damage. I think she actually is a kind of an interesting unit. I think you can actually, I think she would be, the only thing that's holding it back from me trying to get more of her is... Do I need a quick... Actually, I don't think there's very many... There's a free-to-play welfare quick AoE. Um, let me reframe that sentence. There's a welfare AoE quick unit that is very good, which is Hogan. Um, so I don't really need one, but I do kind of like a lot of what she's doing. And I also think she just looks sick as hell. This is a cool look. This is... This is <laughs> Like a, like a, reminds me a little bit of a Mortal Kombat character. It might just because of the Raiden hat, though. Maybe in my head, anytime I see someone with that hat, I think of Big Trouble in Little China, and then I also think of Mortal Kombat. But either way, I think she's really cool. I think she actually sounds really good. I would be kind of interested to see if, um, maybe if you play JP, you can tell me a little bit more about how she should be, how good she is in actually looping. But I think she should be fine. She seems to be able to have enough attack, and she has enough hits that would be able to make up for it, and plus she has an MP gauge charger. So even if you didn't make it all the way, double Scotty, plus another unit at the end, that should be enough to do a full loop. And if she doesn't have enough to do a full loop, I guess there's always um, summer this year with um, a unit that's going to be helping some quick units do some stuff as well. I forgot her name. What is the name of the fox woman that is not Tomomo? 
It's gonna kill me because someone's gonna yell at me if I don't actually look it up. She's here somewhere. She is... Suzaki is... Suz there you go. Summer Suzaki goes in. That's who I was thinking of. But anyway, that's the, what it's looking like for Halloween. I will likely not be doing a subbing video because Van Gogh fucking cleaned me out. I don't want to do any, I don't really want to do that much more summons on a video uh, because the last time I did a video summoning on someone, uh, it turned into it devolved into us Tom making Joker jokes. So I think you guys can be saved for a, uh, at least until November. But maybe I'll do like maybe one or two multis off screen, just because I love Halloween, man. I love these CES. It's really it really annoys me that they released Van Gogh early. Because I would have loved this banner to be summoned first and then given me more time to actually do stuff, but whatever. Best of luck to you guys. Best of luck grinding. I'll be joining you in the event grind as well. Actually, I'll be working a little bit today, so maybe I'll, I'll best start it tomorrow morning. <laughs> but either way, best of luck to you guys. Feel free to correct me on anything I said here. I'm pretty sure that's how this event will work itself, is that I've basically solved it in my head of like, oh yeah, just... Very easy, just kind of just do all this stuff and then you'll get it and you just keep on doing it on repeat and stuff like that. At least that's how I, I imagine it in my head at the moment. If I'm wrong, feel free to tell me and explain a little bit more. But in terms of a very easy unga bunga way of understanding it, number go up, get many stuff, get many materials. Until next time everyone, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.